Okay, we've got the Disco 3 back in the workshop. He's been a bit unloved. We've got some videos to do on him. We've got the sort of fake facelift grill. We're going to do the full facelift soon. Um, but what are we doing today? We are doing the Discovery 3 brake upgrade. So, on the Discovery 3, they had two diameters of brake disc fitted. The petrol ones, which aren't very common in the UK or Europe, had bigger brake discs. They had the same brake caliper, the same brake pads, but they had a bigger disc, so it was a bigger diameter disc, and they had a different slider carrier assembly here to make the caliper sit out further. So we have fitted the larger brake discs. Now, they're not as big as the Discovery 4. The Discovery 4 actually had bigger discs again. They were 36 centimeters diameter. Um, but we have done the Discovery 4 brake upgrade on the front and I'll put a link to it there, but that's really just upgrading the large brake discs to these drilled and groove types. So yeah, so not only are we gonna show you about fitting the bigger diameter brake disc, um, and the and the associated slider we're going to show you we fitted these drilled and groove brake discs which give you better cooling keep your pads cleaner better for off-road um, so this is great if you've got a caravan or if you're towing diggers and trailers around this brake upgrade would be would be pretty good i reckon for your disco 3 now we've gone the extra step we've got a new paint booth where Put in through its initial steps and so we've painted the inner part of the brake disc here and the caliper and the slider now we're not initially planning on selling painted parts but if people um, are interested in that that's something we could discuss in the comments below down there right so let's go and have a look so we're going to put a kit together for sale on the website that's basically uh, we're going to have a look on the table what it includes but basically to upgrade from the standard diesel disc to the slightly bigger petrol disc setup so that's what we've got so what i've got on the table ian's got it all sorted for me here is a sort of comparison before and after so what we've decided to put in the kit is a pair of drilled and groove brake discs now be careful when you get these they are handed the grooves go a different way so this one is the left hand one and when it's this way up the grooves as you go from the outside to the inside go anti-clockwise and on the right hand disc they'll go the other way so watch that so obviously the ones you get won't have the red painted bit they'll just be this um oh, passivation what is it it's like a it's like a sort of zinky thing finish um but these are vented discs you can see on the side they're drilled and grooved um, also a new slider carrier assembly um, this comes complete with new bolts and obviously you've got the new rubber seals and you've got the new sliders do you just want to pop one of those out for me Ian? show you there so this is you know these often seize up if you watch our other video on the disco 4 these were all seized so having this you have to have it because it's a bigger diameter so if you put those two next to each other in so if we put the two carriers bear in mind the calipers are the same we're not changing the calipers but if you look you can see how much higher this one sits so where it bolts on the hub it goes out to accommodate the bigger disc that's why you need to change those um, but the benefit is you're also getting new sliders um, that helps your caliper equalize upgraded brake pads we've got these ebc ones we found these to be good and reasonably priced um so and they they've got this groove in them and it seems to work well with the drilled and groove brake discs so we've got a pair of these pads and also the spring shims that hold the brake pads in right and also we're throwing in with the kit because they're sort of can be horrible as you'll see in the video now um, these countersunk brake disc retaining bolts because they get all snarled up so and so you so the kids gonna have that doubled but also a new sensor so this is the brake where 
pad sensor. This bit on the end seems to break whenever you take it out and it's brittle. So I would recommend changing it. There's nothing really that wears in it. It's just the wire. It, it's that bit there that gets brittle where it goes into the caliper. And I guess it sees a lot of heat cycles and goes brittle. And we're also going to put in the kit a couple of these clips that hold this on because... Ian says they're a pain to get out, so chuck a couple of new clips in. Right, so that's the kit. Right, we're going to do it then. Ian's got his gloves on. He's ready to go. Right. So we've jacked the car up. We've raised the suspension into off-road mode. So when you jack it up, it gives you a little bit more clearance. We have got the axle stands underneath. We're trying not to crush Ian. We have to have the inspector come out and check our, our brand new trolley jack, didn't we, sir? Health and safety executive will be happy. I don't quite know what the value in that was, but <laughs> we'll, we'll gloss over that. Tick a box. Tick a box. We've ticked the box. Right, sorry, Ian. What size spanner you got? What are you doing? 13 mil socket and a 17 mil spanner to take your two slider bolts out that attach the caliper to the carrier. So we haven't we haven't practiced this. We haven't had this off. So we'll do this real time. I guess you could turn the steering wheel a little bit. Gonna slacken them off a little. I'm gonna, I'm gonna come around this side a little bit here. Yeah. See what you're doing a bit better. Um, we can take our, as ever broken, can, yeah. wear sensor off. So then, so you, it should just pull out from on the caliper there. There's a little cap that it sort sits. of goes over the brake nipple um, thing, doesn't it? Bleed nipple there. And then it should tuck back in out the way. You can now, I guess now's a good time to take, there should be a 10 millimeter bolt. You'll need a 10 millimeter socket to take the bolt out of there. Ours has been apart previously, so we've just, and ours has snapped. So when you're putting your bolt back in there, good idea to put some copper grease on it. If you get it out, it actually have to do what we've done and you can see it's all snapped it's off in there, it's sheared yeah. off. So. We just cable tie that on oh, to hold that in place. Yeah. We could weld that on, but yeah. yeah. But yeah, normally you'd have to uh, unbolt, unbolt that bracket there. Um, now resetting the. Piston. Oh yeah, yeah this, we we keep having a so debate, I've, don't we? We I could turn the wheel. I think. Them off. I'm going to turn the wheel just so we can video better and give a bit more access. Hold on a minute. Right, we've turned the steering wheel, we've got a bit more visibility now. Now, we keep having debate, debates with our YouTube audience out there on the best way to push your caliper back in. Because when we put new pads, now it actually looks like the pads are quite new on this one anyway. Um, but your piston can often be a, a long way out and you have to push it back in. And it's easier to do it now while it's all bolted up. Um, what we did in the other video is we sort of rammed a screwdriver between the disc and the pad here on this side to push it back in because we're changing the disc we're changing the pad it's brutal but it would do for because we're changing it all um but but sam sam reckons that we really need to try and get in here and they do appear to have left you a gap there and lever against the disc and against the carrier um so ian's gonna have a go at that You've technique go in a, a bit of an angle and pull back to give yourself the space now the trouble with doing it this way is if your sliders are seized and, and you ain't gonna be able to move no, it very easily and we've had a few C sliders right. now so in theory that's our, worth a go cars. so so that has helped us so there. it is it is easy if everything's free moving freedom. you can see how yeah so just nice push that, that caliper is. backwards and forwards a bit now you can yeah you so you can see how that caliper slides right so now we've got our bolts loose so we now we've got those back we got sam happy now Ah, yeah, so sometimes they we've got to spin it. They're not spinning, we're lucky, aren't we? Sometimes uh, it's because we slacken them off first. First thing we do, we slacken them. But sometimes you will get this, this nut here spinning and you have to hold this and then undo the bolt off the back. So because we've reset the pads and everything, that should just pull away nice and easy. It's not still trying to grip on the pads. Well, he's got a couple of cable ties just to get that, because we're going to get that caliper out of the way, because we don't want that. Just while you want that bracket. Um, and we don't want it stressing the rubber brake hose. You don't want to take the weight of that caliper. You got that, Ian? Yeah. 
Right, so we got that hung up all out the way. So we don't need to worry about any of that now. We're free to work. So what we've got left now, we've got the slider on there. We've got right, your pads. pads. Pads just pop out. So They're lush pads, they are. Disc. There's nothing wrong with them. This is where your spring seats sit. Let's have a quick look at those, yeah. So they just pop off. So these ones look alright, they're not too bad. We've but got the new other ones in the disc kit. four ones were rusty as poop, weren't they? But we don't need to take them off, they would just come off, but yeah. that just shows you where they live. Um, now we've got to try and undo this bolt. Yeah now, so don't take this carrier off yet. Because just in case. Just in case. So what we've got to do, we've got to undo this little countersunk bolt. Right? So let's have a look. So, so Ian's got the impact driver. So as you hammer it, it gives it a little anti-clockwise turn. And that's a Torx T50, right Ian? Yep. Which is quite a weird size. You, you want to check you have that before you start. Now I might have to put a screwdriver in the top there to stop it. So that's why having been able to put the screwdriver in there to lever against the carrier is why it's worth leaving that on for the minute. You might find that you can free that off just with giving it a few knocks with a hammer. Put the tool in there, give it a few knocks, that might free it off. But we found these bolts generally seize up pretty bad and don't want to undo and round off. and They're not fun. So we've, got, we've got new ones in the kit. What's this car got in it? I can't remember. It's 120 odd thousand miles. I think it's been through a set of few sets, sorry, of brake pads so and discs. So often these have been done four or five times. You'd be lucky if you were the first person to Looks take like that someone's off. tried drilling previously to knock oh, it around. Oh, to get a little knock on it, yeah. So we're going to put those in the kit. You're more likely to need them than not. Right, hub nut. So I reckon what we've got to get off next is the main bolts that that bolt the carrier to the hub. I'm just going to pop that bolt back in by a couple of turns. Right, you worry about that? Just make sure this doesn't fall off. I don't think it will on this one. Mm. But you just don't want it falling on your toe. Got the lever bar, 17 millimeter socket right here. 21. 21, sorry. And they're done up tight usually. Well, you want them done up tight, really. So, as well as upgrading the brakes with this kit, you're also putting all new stuff on anyway. So, you're refurbing and upgrading everything in one go. Because the only thing you're buying extra, really, because you're going to change your disc, you're going to change your pads, it's only the carrier. And even when you change the carrier, you normally put new slider bolts in, because they rust, so. Yeah, these ones are actually surprisingly good. good. These are the best we've had. The other size was pretty seized, I think. Seems a shame to throw those in the scrap bin, all that kit there, doesn't it? Calipers, but we'll have, yeah, because we'll have a set of calipers as well, aren't we? Can't fit it on the Mazda. That's our old carrier. That's our old cat. We don't need that. Alas, he's he's for the bin or something. Right, so that is it, ready now to whoop that disc off. They can be quite stuck, we were lucky there. On the disc, you, you sometimes have got a hammer and bash and vibrate them loose. Um, so we've got that there all nice, ready to go. Now, I think what we're going to do is, I reckon we'll just get the wire brush out. We're going to have a cup of tea, I'm going to clean up all this dirt here, and I'll get in just to give a quick coat on that back, a quick coat of black paint on that rear, rear, um, oh, stone guard, splash guard, stone guard, um, and then we'll come back, and we'll be all fired up, we'll get everything ready, and we'll put it all back together again. 
Right, we're all organised. We've had our cup of tea. Um, we got all the bits laid out here that we're going to put on. Now notice, obviously, we got our new caliper there. Um, so, but obviously, you'll have your old caliper unless you happen to fit a new caliper at the same time. Um, so, ignore the fact that we're putting that on without it being connected. Everything else will be the same. Right, off we go in. So, yeah, obviously, we'll get the disc on first. The lighting doesn't look good in the workshop today, I don't know why. So obviously you've got to line it up, it'll only go on one way and line up with the little countersunk hole. So watch when you're putting it on that you've got it lined up with that threaded bit. could do that up again later when you got the because at some point the wheel's going to start the wheel with that? should be the thing to yeah. hold it on so. it's actually only holding it there when you take the wheels off because it's sandwiched between the wheel and the hub it, it doesn't actually that bolt isn't ultra critical right that bolt actually wasn't in the other side at all really when i okay. took it apart so yeah you really don't need it no it does just help, it, especially at this point, just holds it all on there for you. Right, the slider's on next. So reuse your same bolts, no need to put anything on them. Look at that, 21 mil. Uh, no, notice that these bolts are 12-sided, um, so you will need a 12-sided socket, which, which is not uncommon, it's actually standard. So obviously we do these videos real-time, so you can fast-forward if you want, but at least you get an idea of how long it really takes you, and we show you it. Otherwise you in danger of missing some little bit out that someone would have found some little bit that someone would have found useful blue peter were good at that weren't they and here's the finished tracy island Do you remember the tracy island here? I, I, yeah i remember the tracy island i'm not that young i can't say i remember blue peter's tracy island but It looked awesome, but it was like, looked rubbish until they finished it. And then it was like, and here's one that's finished. This is not what? Right, yeah, make, make sure, sure we get, nice they're the ones. If there's any bolts on here that we want tight, it's those two. I'll get that. Right, that's all on and nice and shiny. So I reckon we got the sliders in there. I reckon we're on pads now. Right, brand new, shiny. Everything's shiny. Pad Squid them in, the top and the bottom, they're the same. They sort of get into the groove. While Ian goes to get the, get the pads, I'll have a little look at those. So you can see those have all fitted in there. Copper grease, copper grease a bit on the, where it's going to sort of, on those little tabs at the edge of the, because it sort of slides. So this is in, where it's going to slide, slide so you don't as want they pad, wear, as they wear. You don't yeah. want your pad seasoned at one end or anything like that. And don't, shouldn't, is it going to slide there when you press the brakes? No, just when you... Uh, it went a little bit, bit it went a little bit, and it will slowly work its way along. Yeah. It slowly work its way along as, <laughs> as your pads wear down. Yeah, that just is go in one end at a time and just that is in. the easy way of doing those he's making it look easy now that looks mint on there now with all those and the painting isn't going to make it break any better no, but 
but at least it looks nice. It looks nice and clean. While we're doing it, it's nice to have it all looking nice. A little bit of copper grease. Whether it stops squealing, I don't know, but there's no downside to it, is that? No. It's supposed to stop the brakes squealing, isn't it? So, middle and both ends, where we're putting it, that's where it contacts. Then on the, the piston side, it's where the two pistons go. Oh, yeah, because it's only around the periphery, isn't it? Yeah. Try not to get it all over the brake discs, obviously. Yeah, so we put that on afterwards, so yeah, that's that you're not better, trying yeah. to handle the brake disc with it all over the oh, back yeah. and everything. Now, at this point, you'd, you'd unclip slip your... your cable ties that's holding that. Swing your old caliper back on and bolt that on, but obviously we've got our new caliper here to do. So we're just going to... So you should find that you've got enough pad width here to accommodate for your new pads. If you couldn't get your screwdriver in, it was seized or anything, then you need to get a G-clamp on your caliper and push these back. You can either get a piston wind-back tool or a, or a G-clamp on them and push these right back in until they're as flush as they'll go with the rubber, they should bottom out and stop yeah. there. Obviously we've got brand new ones, so, so we're, we're on, we're easy. And you should find that it's nice and loose then on those new pads. Got Plenty that. of room for them. If you don't push the pistons back, you'll struggle to get them over the new pads. Yeah. And it's hard to do it, it's harder to do it when it's hanging up there pushing back than it is when it's... If not. you're fitting new calipers like we are, Left and right should be labelled on it, or just make sure your bleed nipples at the top. Good point. That's the easiest way to check. So the sliders aren't handed, the calipers are handed, and if you've got drilled and grooved discs, the discs are handed. So yeah, watch. I mean, you'll normally do one, but that is a good point, Ian, the left and right on the caliber. Right, hold, yeah, when, when they're nice and new now, you're going to have to hold that with a spanner to stop that slider spinning. You might find you need to grind your spanner down a little bit. Ours is just about the right size. Oh, because they're quite thin. Because they're is quite it? thin. They're yeah, quite narrow. You end up just getting your spanner stuck in oh, there. Right, yeah. You might have to take your angle grinder to that a little bit. But once they come tight, they're normally alright. You don't have to. Yeah. So ours just slides straight off there. Give it an extra nip. That's that. Don't forget the bottom one. Who's mm -hmm. after me now? Craig, sorry, I've just done up on you. I'll ring you back. Craig, might, what? He normally gives us some tips, Craig. That was a little bit more stuck there. So we'll. That if you're using you're reusing your caliper, you shouldn't need to bleed it. Although it's a good time to bleed the brakes now because yeah, well you've got, got all the wheels it. and everything yeah. off, so it's not a bad time to do it. And while everything else is new, it's nice to put some new fluid in there. Shouldn't need to, depending on why you've changed them. Brake pad sensor. Brake pad sensor. We'll do a separate video for because you may be changing that just because it's worn out. Okay. Or you you, do may, a not, you may not be doing the yeah. whole job and. We'll show you what's required on that one. We'll do that as a separate quick video there. Cool, but that's that then. Finished, didn't it? You're away to go then. Yep. Right, obviously the first couple of times you brake, um, be careful. Why? Um, the first, you'll have to press the brake pedal a couple of times because these calipers aren't out fully, right? So you'll have to get press the brake pedal before you even pull away or drive off. Also, your pads do need to bed in a little bit, so... Don't be going doing no crazy driving to see how good your brakes are initially. Well, not and then sue my, but anyway. Um, right, so there we go. There's the brake upgrade done. Um, good luck with that. Let's, um, the figures, can we just have a quick check of the figures? So the Discovery 4 has 360 millimeter discs. These are 336. Ish, 336. 36, and the other one. Three, Can you remember what the other one? The, the other's a 320. Yeah, so the diesel has the 320. We've upgraded from 320 to 336. So this is a middle ground size-wise, but you've got the advantage of the better pads, the better discs, and it seemed, when we looked into it, there was a lot of effort went into changing to the 360. The 360 so this, seems a lot. The stone guard, for this the, one. the stone guard, you, 
where the stone guard here is, you needed to go to the bigger one. The hub is the same, but you needed to change the stone guard and obviously the calipers, caliper. Which everything are a lot more needed to change on the bigger ones because they're a whole new caliper as well. So there we go. That's that upgrade. So that's disco three diesel to petrol brake upgrade. Good luck with that.